All right, guys, part two of introduction to ARM video, and let's just jump straight into it where we left off from part one. All right, so section A14, A14, okay, architecture extensions. All right, so um, I guess each architecture will have kind of like a base level, like we just talked about uh, the profiles from part one. But even aside from the pro profiles, you can actually customize and extend the architecture for specific use cases. All right. So, what exactly are these extensions? But they're just extra goodies. All right. Extra goodies. If you implement these extensions, you get more features, and they're all specified very well. So let's just run through them real quick, and I'll just give you guys a rundown of what some of them mean. So. Thumb EE, this is just a variant of thumb instruction set. We already talked about thumb a little bit, so not too important. VFP is a floating point coprocessor. So this is probably like extra instructions that are particularly good for handing, handling floating point math, which is actually much different than integer math, right? Doing 2 plus 2 is quite simple. Doing 3.567 plus 2.859 or whatever is much more difficult. So floating point, um, floating point support is a big thing. Uh, another cool extension they have is uh, SIMD, advanced SIMD, S-I-M-D. I always I think it's pronounced SIMD casually, but this is an instruction set that provides single instruction, multiple data functionality, and this is pretty cool. I have a small example to explain this a little bit on the right, but um, single instruction, multiple data. What does this mean? So, think about um, a basic add assembly instruction. All right, it might look something like this. I want to add R0 plus R1 and move it into R0. This might be what a simple add instruction looks like. It just takes two registers, puts it into one register. What a SIMD instruction can do is actually with one instruction, with still just one instruction, you can actually access multiple data points at the same time. So this instruction could actually be like, I want to add um, um, R0, 5, 6, I want to add R0, uh, sorry, this is wrong. This should be. So I want to add four registers, R0, R1, R2, R3. I want to add each of those correspondingly with four other registers four, five, six, and seven. All right, I want to store the results in R0 to R3. So what this is actually doing, this is doing like four ads at the same time and putting it all into the same place, right? With one specialized instruction. And this is really cool. Um, some of these type of instructions where you add all this stuff kind of like at the same time, these are used for like advanced signal processing type of features, like maybe audio processing, digital signal processors use these kind of cool single instruction, multiple data instructions. All right. Um, other extensions, security features. It's kind of boring. Well, not boring, but um, I guess not going to dive into that too much. Um, another cool one that I want to mention is that there's an extension called Giselle for ARM. And what is Giselle? But Let's just read it. This is a Java bytecode execution extension that extended from ARM. Um, so uh, it's a lot of fancy words, but if you guys are familiar with uh, Java, this is kind of like hardware support for Java bytecode. So if you guys know, Java is a little different from some other programming languages because when you compile Java code, it compiles to this special Java bytecode, and you need a runtime to execute it, right? There's that JVM, and the JVM knows how to execute um, Java bytecodes because those bytecodes aren't really machine instructions. So it's kind of a runtime software to execute these bytecodes. Pretty much what this extension is saying is that there's actually a way that the hardware itself can interpret and understand the Java bytecodes directly. And so this could be like potentially really executing Java bytecodes very fast straight from hardware which is a really cool extension, and they probably added this when you know Java started blowing up. But let's just keep going on. Um, so the next section, 
A15, the ARM memory model, is just a quick snippet about um, the address spacing and memory. And it's actually kind of a nice segue to just talk about memory a little bit. So the ARM architecture uses a flat, uh, single flat address space of 2 to the 32 8 bit bytes. Um, the address space is also regarded as 2 to the 30th, 2 to the 30, 32 bit words. So hopefully that math kind of makes sense. If you can support 2 to the 32 8 bit bytes, you can also kind of support 2 to the 30th, 32 bit bytes because this is actually divided by 4. Um, you have to understand binary to understand why this is true, but I'll try to explain it a little bit on the right. So um, let's just talk about addresses a little bit. All right. So when they say they have a flat address space of two to the thirty-two bytes, it means they have just like thirty-two to the thirty-two. This is about four million or four gigabytes. This is just four million, but I don't know the exact number. It's just 2 to the 32 unique things. And those addresses can be listed uh, all the way down from like 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way down to um, 2 to the 32. So each one of these addresses represents a unique byte. All right, so don't look at, let's just take this example, right? So each address here represents a byte. And this is a shorthand way of representing a byte. All right, so remember a byte, let's just do some basics again. But one byte is eight bits, right? So let's just take, this is, so this is hex. This x means hexadecimal. If you open up your calculator, this de as hex. Um, Decimal, this is the number 222, um, but actually here they have it in the byte version. So you can see how this is ex exactly one byte or eight bits. The bit representation is um, 11011110. So these eight bits represent DE. And if you go back to our little um, memory table here, like address zero correspond. Um, the value DE is at address 0, the value AD is at address 1, the value BE is at address 2, whatever. But no one writes it like this, so I'll show you how people usually write it. Um, people usually write this in like word increments or chunk increments, all right? So this is a much more easy way to kind of just read memory because you, you usually interpret memory in four bytes at a time. At least in the ARM architecture, you always interpret things um, four bytes at a time. So one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, nobody would ever read it like this. We kind of read it like this. So at address zero, we're storing dead beef. This is four bytes. Um, at address four, we're storing this value. At address eight, we're storing this value. Address C, uh, which is 12, we're storing this value, all right? So another cool thing to kind of um, recognize here is the concept of the big versus little Indian. I'm sure some of you might have heard about this, but how do we know um, dead beef here represents dead beef when we look at it in a chunk, right? When we look at it per byte, it's actually very clear. This address is for this byte, but when you group it, there's actually two distinct ways of grouping it. So if the DE, if these kind of, if this byte comes first and it's actually the lowest memory address, we call that big Indian. But also you can reverse that and people call that little Indian. So actually at address three, they have DE, address two, they have AD, address one, they have BE, but it's literally just the reverse. And all this is, is a different way to interpret the bytes. You, you either interpret it as is this is dead beef, right? Dead beef. Or you can interpret it kind of backwards, like dead beef. But either way, no matter what your system uses, the word stored at address zero is dead beef. All right? So this concept, um, I'm not doing it justice by explaining it here, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of an intuition about how bytes are stored in memory and how you address them. All right? 
So let's go on to part A2. Debugging is not important. It is important, but so this section is actually pretty crazy. So like many of you guys know that when you use new software, you read API docs, right? If you like learn this new API, you read the documents for software, right? But actually, there is an API for hardware, and they just call it application level programmer's model. But what this really is, is literally just like the programmer's interface to the hardware. So this section A2 is kind of like the, just like the API docs for the hardware. And just like software, you have these things for hardware. So um, this is where it's getting a little complicated. And I'm just going to actually focus on the left. And let's just go through some important parts of this part. So um, this section A.2 is very important because this actually specifies the size of the core data types. And remember, um, within different specifications, they will call these things will have different sizes, all right? So ARM is just one of them, and based on whatever specification you're looking at, these numbers could change. So for a byte, it's 8 bits. Uh, a word is 32 bits, which is very specific to ARM. A double word is 64 bits. But you know, these definitions could change across processors, but it's really important that they specify it all out here. So. Um, the instruction set contains instructions um, supporting the following data types. So these are all the combinations of things, like you could hold a 32-bit pointer in one register, um, a 32-bit integer in one register. You could hold two 16-bit integers, sorry guys, you could hold two 16-bit integers packed into a register or four 8-bit integers packed into a register, or even one 64-bit integer held in two registers. So every specification must specify these definitions. Arithmetic, um, no, this is not, this is too detailed. This is too detailed. Oh, this is also really important. So every single processor specification will specify kind of what registers it needs to use. Remember, if you guys don't remember the memory hierarchy, but like the register is the closest piece of memory to the processor and it has the fastest access time. So for the ARM v7, it has 13 general purpose registers, R0 to R12, where you can just do general math, special registers. And actually they have three 32-bit um, special registers, R13 to R15, these are special ones. So these are actually really important to understand. Like, I'm not going to do it justice by this video, but um, every single processor architecture does have special, special registers. So one of them is a stack pointer. Um, the stack pointer is used for calling into and out of subroutines. It's used in conjunction with this link register. Um, so both of these work together to kind of implement something called a call stack. And what a call stack is, is just like when you have your function calling a function, calling a function, then returning, then returning, then calling a function, tracking all that state is done with these two registers. All right. That was so simplistic, but hopefully that's the gist of it. Um, the program counter is actually very important. The program counter is actually a special register that always points to the instructions you're about to execute. So pretty much the program counter is always pointing to different memory instructions, and you're always, always, always executing whatever the program counter is pointing to. And this is also a very important register. So, all right guys, so that's that was section A2.3, and we are on page 43 of page 2000. Um, I think that's enough for this set of videos. I'm going to stop it here. Um, I felt like I talked about a lot and I kind of rushed it, but obviously we're not going to go through 2000 pages, but I hope this video gave you guys a good introduction of what a processor specification kind of looks like. So this was a good introduction and I hope it gave you guys a taste of hardware a little bit and a taste of processors a little bit. All right. 
Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoyed it.